بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله الا الله وحده لا شريك له احد صمدا لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يخي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير all praise is for allah the only and one the almighty and all powerful the omnipotent and omnipresent the one and only and all our salam for nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam we thank allah for giving us the tawfiq to spend a little time in understanding his deen in understanding him and in understanding that we have different stages of life coming this is just the beginning it is a testing ground and then based on how we do in this life our eternal life will depend based on how we obey allah as per the commandments of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam our eternal life will depend on that and may allah taala give us the ability to spend this life so that we can not only get peace and success in the eternal life but also peace and success in this life so in terms of lessons i learned final few words continuation from the previous session you know anyone's experiences are vast and varied not just my experiences i have shared a part of my experiences as they relate to the topic we are on and uh, i would say a fraction of my experiences to a large extent i had realizations of urgings and distractions and distractions caused by my base desire so in terms of base desires i think i was to a large extent cognizant of the harm that can be caused by the base desires to a lesser extent i realized the role played by illusions of dunya the attractions of dunya and to a much lesser extent i realized the subtle deceptions of shaitan but uh, now i can realize them more clearly after the fact and after being exposed to the preparations for presentations on deceptions of shaitan and how to dispel the deceptions of shaitan that really made me realize it, it was a uh, life changing event for me in terms of understanding how my life went in the past and i'm deeply deeply thankful to allah taala for that experience every brother or sister should be constantly vigilant so that shaitan cannot create havoc in our lives by using our base desires and worldly illusions so we have these three aspects of base desires and the attractions of dunya and both of them shaitan seeks to use to derail us and to destroy us every brother sister should be constantly vigilant so that shaitan cannot create havoc in our lives by using our base desires and worldly illusions so we are deprived of eternal blessings in the hereafter we have one allah one nabi 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one life there will not be a second chance jannah whose expanse is as wide as the sky and the earth and with unimaginable peace and bliss and blessings awaits us depending on how we use this one life so those are few parting words i mean uh, concluding words on uh, the previous uh, session and now we come to the concluding section of this long series somehow it became long i i did not realize it will become so long the concluding concluding sessions on do's and don'ts in the quran and uh, the first few slides we went over earlier but then later on you know i backtracked and went over my experiences and uh, uh, the lessons i learned so let me read these these first two uh, slides on this section once again life is really simple but we insist on making it complicated confucius the same holds true for religion islam is really a simple religion but we insist on making it complicated the more complex and complicated we make it the more distant we go away from the truth leo tolstoy and let me read that again the famous russian novelist said if a person is given only two choices to adhere to the orthodox church or islam any sensible person will not hesitate about his choice and anyone will prefer islam with its acceptance of one tenet single god and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instead of such complex and incomprehensible things in theology as the trinity redemption sacraments the saints and their images and complicated services and he goes on and finally says and therefore please regard me as a kind muhammadan and all will be fine that was leo tolstoy quran is easy to understand and i will quote six verses from the quran praise be to allah who sent the rasul who sent to the rasul the book in which there is no crookedness is straight plain and simple allah has made it straight and clear allah has made the quran easy these are verses of the book that makes things e clear these are verses of the quran a book that makes things clear a guide and glad tidings for believers allah has made the quran easy to understand and remember six verses quran is easy to understand but you know there are certain words in the quran as all of us know allah taala mentions about them it is he who has sent down to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the book in it are verses that are precise about which we we just now uh, mentioned they are the foundation of the book they are the bulk of the book and others are unspecific a smaller fraction as for those in whose hearts is deviation from truth they will follow that of it which is unspecific seeking discord and seeking an interpretation suitable to them and no one knows its true interpretation except allah and therefore we should keep away from trying to make interpretations of things like alif lam mim and ha uh, ta ha and so on and so forth verily in the quran and let me point this out also that the quran is not just for for us the muslims allah taala says verily in the quran is a message for all the worlds for all peoples and who is going to convey the message you and me now as we know the things that allah taala says that we have to do that counts for one virtue but it is multiplied by 10 so that becomes 10 virtues and the things that allah taala says don't do if we do them then that would be a sin 
And a sin is counted as one and it stays one. The exact expressions that you will see coming are not quoted. The precise verses are not quoted. Only parts of verses are quoted where it is specifically do's or don'ts. The basic idea is given from various translations. It is a sample of many such commandments. Hence, these are obligatory for us. At least we should know as much as possible. There are so many of them. It is mentioned uh, by one alim that I remember that of the uh, 6,000 plus verses in the Quran, only about 600 relate to do's and don'ts. The bulk of the Quran relates to the attributes of Allah and how he dealt with previous prophets and so many other aspects. But only about 600 deal with do's and don'ts. And I have, I have a little over half of them, not, not all of them. I didn't want to make it too comprehensive and again, not too concise in between but I'll give you reference to a more comprehensive listing, uh, which runs to 67 uh, doc files. So it's like a book actually, do's and don'ts, 67 pages. I have included, uh, I, I'm somewhere in the middle, not too concise and not too comprehensive. Note that, Note the minute extent to which Allah Ta'ala delves into in some cases. He goes into minute extent. Note also that a fraction constitutes responsibilities to him. There are many more such verses in the Quran. For example, uh, I have quoted only a few verses on establishing Salah and Zakat. But there are 82, 83 verses on Salat and Zakat. I have, by the way, I should have updated it. Uh, I mentioned that do's are 170 verses and don'ts are 105 verses. Uh, and total is 275, but it will, it will be more than that. I included few more later on. So let's say there are about uh, 300, a little over 300. So that is half of all the verses on do's and don'ts. If we listen with attention at the proper time, we will remember many of the verses. We'll be concerned. How do we remember so many? You don't have to remember so many. You have to listen to them attentively. And when the time comes, they will come to your mind. There are mentions in the Quran uh, about Salat and Zakat many times, let's say 80 times, 83 times, Ramadan five times. Hajj 27 times. And in terms of the framework on Sharia or Islam, a complete code of life, which I would say the complete way of life, the complete way, because any other way is not acceptable. So we are right about here, about one of the books of Allah, the greatest book, the Quran, and within the Quran, some of the verses on do's and don'ts. So we are somewhere here. And, uh, you know, what Quran lays down, that becomes the, the framework for ibadat and akhlaqiyat and muamilat and muasharat. Do's in the Quran, true believers establish prayers to Allah. There are many verses, as I mentioned. And I've quoted just uh, or three uh, sources or, or few sources. Establish regular prayers and pay zakat. If you see in blue, that relates to uh, responsibilities towards Allah Ta'ala. And there are not many blues in my collection. It is better if you give your charity in secret to the poor. It is better, but not obligatory. If you want to motivate others, you can give openly. But the, your goal should be to please Allah solely. 
for the love of Allah, give help financial to kinsfolk and the needy. Be kind to parents, relatives, wayfarers, meaning travelers, the needy, orphans, and there are a number of verses on that. Take care of orphans, number of verses on that. Say good things to people. Remind the believers to do good. Amar bil maruf. Be good to prisoners of war. So much disregarded in so many places over centuries, before Islam, after Islam. Do good and ask for no reward from people. Very important. We do good and ask for no reward from people. Forgive the faults of others. Punish those who hurt you in equal amount. If somebody hurts, we can take retribution, but that should be in equal amount, not more. Then we will be held accountable if it is more. Punish as you were punished. But if you show patience, that means if you forgive, it will be better for you. That is the spirit of Islam. We can take retribution, but if we forgive, that is better. If you forgive, then it is better. Speaking good and offering forgiveness is better than giving charity and hurt or annoy people with it. Giving charity and hurting people or annoying people, saying them that I have helped you and you are doing this to me. Provide evidence and truth. Produce your proof if you are honest. Give thanks to Allah for everything. So this relates to Allah. Free slaves. Fulfill your oaths and promises and be trustworthy to all people. Fulfill your obligations and contracts. Pay back your debt and give back what you held for others. Amanat. Be a straight and upright believer. Be patient and put your full trust and faith in Allah relates to Allah, as all the prophets did. So the point I wanted to make about it is, let me read it again. Be patient and put your full trust and faith in Allah, as all the prophets did. All the prophets, they had full trust in Allah, faith in Allah. And Allah Ta'ala is asking us to do the same. The point I want to make is that the prophets exhibited exhibited certain qualities. We are also supposed to exhibit those qualities. We should not say, oh, they were prophets. They did such and such act. We are not supposed to do those acts. No. Allah Ta'ala sent the prophets to be examples for us. And we are supposed to follow those examples and not make ex excuses that they were prophets so they could reach a certain level. And we are not supposed to reach that level. No. That should not be the attitude. Seek knowledge and education. Do not shout. Speak politely, keeping your voice low. So seek knowledge and education. Allah is saying this. Knowledge, seeking knowledge is obligatory for us. Do not shout. Speak politely, keeping your voice low. And this is the, the minute extent to which Allah Ta'ala goes to. Be humble. Talk straight to the point without any ambiguity or deception. Very clearly. Speak very clearly. And I guess that's why Allah Ta'ala does not like poets. Because poets are ambiguous. Choose best words to speak and say them in the best possible way. Minute detail of Allah Ta'ala. Always speak the truth. Shun words that are deceitful and ostentatious. That means showing off. Say with your mouth what is in your heart. Not doing that would be a sign of nifak, hypocrisy. Speak in a civilized manner in a language that is recognized by the society and is commonly used. And once again, don't show off. When, when you voice an opinion, 
be just, even if it is against a relative. And in another place, Allah Ta'ala says, be just and give evidence, even if you have to give evidence against yourself or your parents. Respect and honor all human beings, irrespective of their religion, color, race, sex, language, status, property, birth, profession, job, and so on. All human beings. This is the language that we see uh, about discrimination. No discrimination based on religion, color, race, sex, language, status, property, birth, etc. And uh, we see these in these Western countries after 1400 years. Be in peace, meaning do not create problem for others. Say peace to the ignorant ones. In other words, do not get into arguments with ignorant ones. If they want to get into arguments with you, say to them peace. Blessed are those who reconcile between people. Be moderate in your pace. Allah is talking about our pace. Walk with humility and calmness. Keep your gaze lowered, devoid of any lecherous leers and salacious stares, meaning shun excessive or offensive sexual desires. When you meet each other, offer good wishes and blessings for safety. One who conveys to you a message of safety and security, and it goes on, meet it with a greeting still more courteous, or at least of equal courtesy. Somebody says, Assalamu alaikum, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you enter your own house or the home of somebody else, compliment the inmates, inmates, give salam to the inmates. When you hear something malicious about someone, keep a favorable view about him or her until you attain full knowledge about the matter. Consider others innocent until they are proven guilty with solid and truthful evidence. Ascertain the truth of any news, lest you smite someone in ignorance and afterwards repent of what you did or repent for what you did. Never think that you have reached the final stage of knowledge and nobody knows more than yourself. Meaning don't be uh, proud and arrogant. And say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. The believers are but a single brotherhood. Live like members of one family brothers and sisters, unto one another. Fulfill your promises and commitments. You know, sometimes you will see uh, that I have not been able to put them similar, similar uh, statements side by side. Uh, I didn't have the time. Keep yourself clean, pure. Dress up in agreeable attire. And again, uh, going back to the minuteness of Allah Ta'ala. And adorn yourself with exqu exquisite character from inside out. Seek your provision only by fair endeavor. In your collective life, make rooms for others so that they can also be accommodated. When invited to dine, and again, the minuteness of Allah Ta'ala. When invited to dine, go at the appointed time. Do not arrive too early to wait for the preparation of meal or linger after eating to engage in bootless babble. Such things may cause inconvenience to the host. Eat and drink what is lawful in moderation. So eating is a commandment of Allah, drinking. And if we eat and drink, keeping in our mind that this is a command of Allah, that becomes worship. 
You should enjoy right conduct on others, but mend your own ways first. Actions speak louder than words. You must first practice good deeds yourself, then preach. Correct yourself and your families first before trying to correct others. Pardon gracefully if anyone among you commits a bad deed out of ignorance and then repents and amends. Call people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful exhortation. Reason with them most decently. Treat kindly your parents, relatives and orphans and those who have been left alone in society. Forgive and overlook. Turn in repentance to your creator. Turn to Allah with sincere repentance. Be dutiful and good to parents and to kindred relatives and to orphans and, and the poor. Kindred actually here means blood relation. Enjoin the prayer in your family and be yourself constant in it. Take care. So this actually has to do with Allah. Forgot to make it blue. Talking about prayer. Take care of the needy, the disabled, those whose hard, hard earned income is insufficient to meet their needs and those whose businesses have stalled. And as in today's world, you know, so many people are suffering because their businesses have stalled or who, who lost their jobs. So help them. And those who have lost their jobs, treat kindly your related neighbors, your unrelated neighbors. That means when it comes to neighbors, treat them kindly, whether they are related or not. Companions by your side in public gatherings or public transportation, they are also like neighbors. Be generous to the needy, wayfarer, the homeless son of the street, the homeless son of the street, and the one who reaches you in destitute condition. I, I, I read, uh, it, this was a few years ago, that in, in Dhaka city, there are about 500,000 Tokai, homeless son of the street. Be nice to people who work under your care. Cooperate with one another in good deeds and do not cooperate with others in evil and bad matters. Feed the poor. Give freely of what you love. Keep your oaths. Honor your treaties. Pardon men and restrain your anger. Think good of others. Be good to guests. Turn away from ill speech. Respond to evil with good. Keep your trusts and promises. Speak nicely, even to the ignorant. If enemy wants peace, then accept it. Recite the Quran slowly and distinctly. This has to do with Allah. Recite as much of the Quran as may be easy for you. Purify your clothes and keep away from filth. Do not pray too loud or too low in tone. Do not approach prayer while you are lazy. Do not severe the relationship with your relatives. Do not cut relationship with your relatives. Do not seal the money of orphans or rip them off. Do not seal the woman's and wife's wealth or rip them off or force them to give up their wealth. Do not accept wicked and corrupt things. Do not corrupt the lands, the earth, people, creations. Do not damage the earth, environment. 1400 years ago, we, we were, Muslims were told about the environment, or people were told about the environment, protecting the environment. Do not trust the weak in mind with your wealth. Do not use the masjids, or we have come to don'ts, by the way, I forgot, I, I, I uh, forgot to notice that. Do not use the masjids to divide the Muslims. Cursed are those who use the masjids to divide the Muslims. They are liars. Do not enter the masjids that are used to divide the Muslims. Do not divide the Muslims. Do not be divided. 
do not conceal the revelations to Allah Almighty. That means uh, do not hold the revelations to yourself. You have to convey to others. Do not bribe or take bribery. Also corrupt money is forbidden. Do not come to houses from their back doors. Again, minuteness of Allah Ta'ala. But come from the front and proper door. Manners on how and when to enter homes are in these verses that are mentioned. Do not throw yourself into destruction. It means do not commit anything that can put you into trouble and harm. Don't be fooled by good talk. Oh my goodness. Do not be arrogant. It is a sin. Never hurt people with your charity. Helping people and then uh, telling them that you have helped them. Tokadia. Do not teach the glorious Quran for money. Do not overburden yourself. Your body has a right on you. Do not teach, uh, sorry, do not cheat with balance. Do not take credit for what you did not earn or deserve. Showing off. Do not envy people. Do not be jealous of what people have. Do not assign lie on Allah Almighty. This is the greatest injustice. Saying that such and such is son of Allah. Do not associate partners with Almighty Allah. Do not kill those who try to kill you and fail. Do not be a murderer. Do not be selfish, greedy, and unjust in your demands. Do not utter slander. Also, do not force your female right-hand possession slaves into sex or prostitution when they desire chastity. We don't have slavery nowadays. I mean, there is slavery, but not in Islam, or is not supposed to be. Do not be bully, do not be a bully. Do not force other people to convert to your religion. Do not be a bragging boaster. Do not talk, listen, or do anything vain. Do not verge upon any immodesty or lewdness, whether surreptitious or overt, secretly or openly. Do not be contemptuous or arrogant with people. Do not walk haughtily or with conceit, arrogance. If you do not have complete knowledge about anything, better keep your mouth shut. Now, this is another thing to note that Allah Ta'ala is so clear and straightforward. His language is so different. Keep your mouth shut. You might think that speaking about something without full knowledge is a trivial matter, but it might have grave consequences. Words have meanings and words have consequences. Do not follow blindly any information of which you have no direct knowledge. You must verify it for yourself. Do not make mockery of others or ridicule others. Do not defame others. Do not insult others by nicknames. Avoid suspicion and guesswork. Suspicion and guesswork might deplete your communal energy. That means break our unity. Spy not upon one another. Do not backbite one another. Do not enter houses other than your own until you have sought permission and then greet the inmates and wish them a life of blessing, purity, and pleasure. Do not follow up what you have given to others to afflict them with reminders of your generosity. I have done this and this for you. Do not expect a return for your good behavior. Do not even, uh, not even thanks. Not even thanks. We do good not to expect thanks or acknowledgement, but for 
the pleasure of Allah and recompense from him only. Do not try to impress people on account of self-proclaimed virtues. Do not be jealous of those who are blessed. Do not squander your wealth senselessly. Do not take bribes. Do not spread gossip. Allah Ta'ala repeats in different parts of the Quran. So many, so many aspects. So because we are forgetful, we don't forget them. Do not harm believers. Do not be rude to parents. Do not say what you don't do. Do not insult false gods of others. Don't deceive people in trade. Don't take items without right. Don't ask unnecessary questions. Don't be miserly or extravagant. Be moderate. Don't claim yourself to be pure. Don't ask for repayment for favors. Don't remind others of the favors you have done to them. Worship now, now comes, so that's the part on don'ts. So first do's and then don'ts. And now I included uh, one part on worship only. Worship Allah alone, turn for help to Allah alone. Worship your Lord who created you. Dedicate to worship the place where Ibrahim salam, used to stand for prayer. Those who refuse his worship and were proud, we will punish them with a painful torment and they will not find for themselves besides Allah, any protector or helper. Those who perform prayers and give alms, zakat and they bow down. Worship him alone and he is the guardian, wakil over all things. Perform your prayers and be obedient to Allah and fear him. Say verily, my prayers, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah. Worship Allah, you have no other ilah but him. Keep him, keep me and my children away from worshiping idols. Ibrahim is praying. Worship Allah alone and keep away from false deities, tagut in Arabic. They worship other than Allah, the objects that have no power to give them anything from heavens and the earth, nor can they ever have power. Now when somebody worships idols created by the hand of people and the idols themselves can not protect themselves. They cannot even speak. How can they protect anybody? And people are worshiping idols. That's the height of ignorance of people. Worship me and perform prayers for my remembrance. None has the right to be worshiped but I, Allah. So worship me alone. Bow down and prostrate yourselves and worship your Lord and do good that you may be successful. Perform prayers, give alms, and hold fast to Allah. I have been commanded only to worship the Lord of this city, Makkah. Worship Allah alone and fear him. Surely my art is vast, so me alone you must worship. And why should I not worship him who has created me? That is enough reason to worship Allah. He's my creator, so why shouldn't I worship him? Those who avoid false deities by not worshiping them and turn to Allah in repentance, for them are glad tidings. So announce the good news to my slaves. If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain and you will certainly be among the losers. Nay, but worship Allah alone and be among the grateful. I have been forbidden to worship those whom you worship besides Allah. When you are free, then stand up for Allah's worship and to your Lord alone, turn your invocations. They should worship Allah and worship none but him alone. So let them worship Allah, the Lord of this house, the Kaaba, who has fed them against hunger and has made them safe from fear. If we have listened with attention at the proper time, 
we will remember many of these verses. This is from me, by the way. If we have listened with attention so far, at the proper time, we will remember many of the verses. We can always review them, and I have posted them in Google Drive. The gist is, in my words, this is what I found to be the gist in simple words. Worship Allah, meet your responsibilities towards him and towards his, his, uh, his uh, fellow being, I mean, our fellow beings, his fellow creation, uh, his creation, our fellow beings. Be good and humble, shun evil and indecency. If we remember these general principles, I guess that would capture most of the, or many of the verses. For a more comprehensive listing of do's and don'ts in the Quran, uh, you can see this uh, link. And this has, as I mentioned earlier, 67 um, doc pages. So th that's like a book. And it goes, there are actually 50 sections into which the do's and don'ts are divided. And uh, you must have noticed I, I, I did very little explanation of the verses so that I can complete uh, in one sitting. So this is a, a listing of things that I thought can be disruptive in uniting uh, Muslims that in a group setting, we do not talk about politics because people will always have different point of view. And uh, that can be a means of dividing us rather than uniting us. We do not talk about nationalism. We do not talk about madhab. We can belong to different madhab, that is fine. Uh, and as to how to perform certain acts based on our madhab, we ask the scholars of our madhab and masail that has to do with madhab. So if we can keep away from these, it helps in uniting us. These are not haram, but in a group setting that seeks to unify us, these can be, uh, they, these can bring discord and disunity. So conclusion, Islam, conclusion after so many sessions, I thought it would take three or four sessions. We have gone through today's the 17th session. Uh, if you, take out the two sessions in which I talked about my life and, and uh, how, uh, and the lessons I learned. So if you take out two sessions, then there are 15 sessions that we have, we have devoted, but uh, total se uh, 17 sessions. Islam prescribes a complete code of conduct and the complete way of life ordained by the creator who sent for us the best of model, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and through his companions and subsequent generations, his sunnah have been passed on to us and preserved for us in great detail. And, uh, you know, somebody mentioned once, a scholar, what is Islam? Islam is the way of life brought by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is Islam. He did the obligatory, the faraiz. He did the wajib. He acted on the sunnah, or he actually uh, left for us the sunnah and the nawafil. And if we follow his footsteps, we would be following the obligatory and the sunnah. And we would be following Islam. And somebody asked Aisha radiallahu anha about uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And she said, didn't you read the Quran? He is a moving Quran. So that's why I was mentioning to you in the previous session that uh, to me, one of the first and foremost uh, uh, section of ilm is his way of life. I mean, he, how he conducted his 24 hour life. That should be the starting point of knowledge not just knowing how he conducted in his 24 hour life, daily life, but practicing on them. Fortunately for me, I would say, I did not have to learn that from books. That was one of the trainings that I went through in going to Tablik Jamaat.
but I guess for you, you have to uh, how he how he slept, how he got up, how he ate, how he uh, used the bathroom, how he went out, how he came in, how he conducted himself under different circumstances. So something that was on the job training for me, uh, you have to find some book on his sira and uh, his uh, uh, his masnoom duas and uh, how he performed his uh, in his daily life. And if you act as per his ways, your our twenty four hour life can be ibadat. And then that's the beauty and the greatness of following the sunnah. 24 hour life will be worshipped. And Allah Ta'ala says, and I have put here in simple terms, uh, Surah number 3, verse 31, in simple terms, it translates to follow him and you are dear to me. He's such an entity. Follow him and you are dear to me. And after that, you expand on your knowledge as much as you like to. But I will urge you, implore on you, request you, humbly, please, get to know his sunnah of daily life. Because all of us lead daily life. All of us, all of us do the things that he did, but we do possibly in our own way. I cannot say for yourself, but possibly in our own way. If we do exactly those things in his way, that will become worship. Islam means peace and Islam means submission to the will of Allah. Thus, Islam means peace through submission. We get peace by submitting to Allah. Peace is in submission to Allah. Peace is in remembrance of Allah, which means submission to Allah. Peace is in obeying Allah. Islam is submission to Allah such that his commands are our likes and his dislikes are our, are our dislikes. What he likes for us is that we follow the Quran and Sunnah. There are sunnah coming out of the body of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about which I was mentioning earlier, short while ago. We also have sunnah of his heart. His greatest sunnah is the agony of his heart. The yearning of his heart, the desire of his heart, the agony of his heart. Fikir, antarit fikir. Or the salvation of mankind, which caused him not only see, to ceaselessly convey the message, but, full, but he fulfilled the rights of the message against all odds and sufferings and afflictions and tortures. He fulfilled the rights of the message in conveying the message. We are the messengers of the messenger. We are destined to die. We will cease to exist bodily. We are expendable, but our soul survives. Its survival depends on our submitting to the creator and on our merging with the creator. Bilin hoye jawa. Allah shattar shate nije ke bilin kore dia. That means, uh, as if I don't have any desires of my own. My, my desire is Allah's liking. And that comes through complete submission. Shaitan is rooted on our way to Jannah. He ceaselessly uses us, our nafsaniyat, and attractions of the dunya to deflect us to Jahannam and to damnation. We should establish relationship with Allah. For me, this is a very important word, relationship with Allah, and seek his help every step of the way and follow the way of life prescribed by him in a manner such that he is eager to meet us. 
and then we become immortal in Jannah. Immortality is not in this dunya. We have to die. We are expand, expendable. We will not remain. We'll go away. People might talk about, about Gandhi and about uh, Martin Luther King and about Nelson Mandela, but it does them no good in the grave unless they have been able to or anybody has been able to please Allah because our immortality is in Jannah. Immortality that will bring eternal peace, bliss, and vast, unimaginable, and glittering palaces and gardens and dominion in Jannah. The immortality in Jahannam, there also people will not die, is of eternal damnation. People will wish they died in Jahannam, but there'll be no death to save them. Choice is ours. So uh, some final words in uh, uh, poetic form. If we look at the world around, what do we see all around? Godlessness and brazenness, shamelessness and lewdness, moral degradation and degeneration, moral bankruptcy and corruption, suppression and subjugation, tyranny and repression, conflict and violence, hatred and intolerance, greed and acquisitiveness, lust and covetousness, my party, right or wrong, my nation, right or wrong. It seems Iblis is basking in attainment and patting himself in his achievement. Muslims were sent as bulwark against wickedness. They will call people towards goodness and stop them from being wicked. Muslims forget their sacred mission. They have themselves fallen prey to shaitan, so there has to be chaos and confusion when the traffic police does not show the way because he himself does not know the way. That's the reason for the problem. The traffic police does not show the way. So there is, there is confusion and chaos all around. So these are uh, some final thoughts. A 20-year-old youth once asked an 80-year-old man, do you remember when you were my age? And the 80-year-old man responded, yes, it was yesterday. I was your age. Nuh alayhi salam, who is reported to have lived for 950 years, was asked at the, at the time of death, in his deathbed, you have lived 950 years. How does it appear to you such a long life? And Nu alayhi salam is reported to have said, it seems to me as if I enter through the door of a room and I'm leaving through the other door of the room. Such a short span. That's the other reality of life. Time is fleeting. How fleeting is the passage of time? How brief is the journey of life? Life is like an ice cube in boiling water. Life is like a candle against the wind that can be blown off any time. Life is like an autumn leaf ready to fall. Life is like the sun that rose and is soon about to set. And hence the tradition, every day at sunrise, the sun proclaims, do whatever good you can today, for this day will never return in your life. And every morning, two angels proclaim from the heavens above, one of them saying, O seeker of virtues, rejoice and go ahead. The other saying, O doer of evils, desist from evil doing. And my final thoughts, in the evening of my life, my deepest, deepest regret and saddest disappointment is that I have not been able to live a life worthy of the grace and mercy and compassion and forgiveness of the Almighty, Allah Ta'ala, and the example and expectation of His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I had written this as part of this presentation on October 2, uh, that means over uh, three months ago, uh, but it kept on uh, lengthening.
And so finally, I have the time to state this. So this is what we went through, components of deen, sources of Islamic law, some attributes of Allah Ta'ala, the reality of Kalima, worship of Allah, success in Islam, reality of dunya, nature of man. Up to this, what I will try to do based on, I think it was suggested by Tawheed, uh, in the next halqa, I'll try to summarize all of these for one halqa, from one through eight. And then it will take another halqa to talk about deceptions of shaitan and the ways to dispel uh, the deceptions of shaitan. And so seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine and ten has to do with shaitan. Seven has to do with dunya. Eight with uh, our nafsaniyat, nature of man. So these are the impediments to worshipping Allah Ta'ala. And then uh, I talked about uh, uh, some aspects of my life and uh, the lessons I learned. And then uh, today we talked about the do's and don'ts, some of the do's and don'ts in the Quran and conclusion. So that's it. Finally, we come to an end of a very lengthy uh, series. May Allah Ta'ala accept. And uh, as I said, in the next two sessions, I will seek to summarize uh, what we did in the previous uh, 16 uh, sessions. We pray for um, each one of us, each other, uh, our well-being, our uh, safety and security and good health and Hayatun Tayyaba, the good life. And we pray for all those who are suffering in different ways. Uh, especially for the parents of, or the father of uh, Topu and Dipu, uh, who is uh, for, uh, for uh, quite a few weeks is in ventilation. And uh, all our brothers who are uh, in ill health. And we pray for the departed souls of all our relatives, our near and dear ones, and for all Muslims in general. And we pray for the, the hidayat of mankind in general. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Jazallahu anna Muhammadin salli ala salamahu wa ahluhu. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta alayka tawakkaltu wa anta rabbul arshil kareem. MashaAllahu kana mumalam yashalam yakun wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi l'ali al-azim alam wa anna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir wa anna Allah kadahata bi kulli shayin ilma. Allahumma inni awzu bika min sharin nafsi wa min shari kulli da batin anta akhizun min asiyatiha inna rabbi ala siratu mustaqim. Subhanallah al-Azim wa bihamdihi wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi lali al-Azim. Rabbana la tuakhizna in nasina wa akhtana rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala al-lazina min kablina rabbana wa la tuhamilna wa la tuakhadana bihi faqmanna wa gfirlana wa marhamna anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. Rabbana innana samina munadi ayyuna dili limani an anamu bi rabbikum fa'amanna. Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna wa sayyatina tawaffana ma'al abrar. Rabbana wa atina ma'awattana ala rusulika wa la tukhlina yawma al-qiyamati inna ka la tukhlifun miyad. Wallah, tu miyama dikye ja ki chu. बोला रे बंग शोनार तो फिक दिए सो एवं हमारे प्रत्येक के जा किचु आमल करार तो फिक दिए सो अल्लाह इधर तुम्हार विशाल मेहरबानी अल्लाह वो अल्लाह तुम्हीं तुम्हार का से पेश करार मतों ना अल्लाह हमारे कुनो आमल ही पेश करार मतों ना तुम्हीं तुम्हार अशेष मेहरबानी ते तार भूल भांति शंक्षुधन करे तुम्हार शाही दरबारे कबूल करो एवं तार सवाब रसूल करीम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम का से पहुँचे दियो अल्लाह एवं आमदेर पिता माता दादा दादी नाना नानी चाचा चाची पुपा पुपु खाला खालु मामा मामी आत्यों शोजन बंधु बंधु शिक्षक शिक्षक त्री आमदेर कॉलेज शवर का से पहुँचे दियो तथा शुमस्त मुसलमाने का से पहुँचे दियो तरसवाब अल्लाह 
এবং তাদের কবরের আজাব যদি মাফ করে না থাকো তো মাফ করে দিও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি আরহামুরাহিমি তুমি তাদের কবর যদি সংকীর্ণ করে রেখে থাকো প্রশস্ত করে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের কবরকে কবর যদি পোকা মাকড়ের জায়গা করে রেখে থাকো আল্লাহ তো জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসের বাগান বানিয়ে দাও আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের কবরকে অন্ধকার ময়ের যদি করে থাকো করে রেখে থাকো আল্লাহ তো নূর দিয়ে পরিপূর্ণ করে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের দরজা উঁচু করো আল্লাহ তাদেরকে কেমতের দিন আর সে নিচে স্থান দিও যেদিন কোন ছায়া থাকবে না তাদের আমল নামার ডান হাতে দিও তাদেরকে কস্তুরির টিলার উপর বিচরণ করার তৌফিক দিও নিশ্চিন্ত মনে যখন সবাই হিসাব দিতে ব্যতিব্যস্ত থাকবে চিন্তাগ্রস্ত থাকবে তুমি তাদেরকে বিদ্যুতের গতিতে পুলসেরা পার হওয়ার তৌফিক দান করো এবং বিনা হিসেবে জান্নাত ফেরদোসে দাখিল করো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের পিছনের গোনা মাফ করো এবং সামনের গোনা মাফ করো তুমি আমাদের পিছনের দোয়া কবুল করো এবং সামনের দোয়া কবুল করো আল্লাহ যেসব দোয়া আমাদের জন্য পৃথিবীতে ক্ষতিকর হবে তার বদলা তুমি আখেরাতে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে সর্বোত্তম গুণে গুণান্বিত করো হুসমে আখলাক দান করো ও আল্লাহ যারা অন্নহারা বস্ত্র হারা গৃহহারা দিশাহারা পথ হারা কন্যা দায়গ্রস্ত রং ঋণগ্রস্ত অভাবগ্রস্ত জুলুমগ্রস্ত আল্লাহ তুমি তাদেরকে তাদেরকে তুমি দেখভাল করো আল্লাহ তাদের সমস্যার সমাধান করো আল্লাহ তাদের জুলুমকে দূর করে দাও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ আমরা ফকির তুমি বাদশাহ আমরা দুর্বল তুমি শক্তিশালী আল্লাহ আমরা গোনাগার তুমি ক্ষমাকারী আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে আমাদের সন্তান সন্ততিকে আমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজনকে আমাদের পাড়া প্রতিবেশীকে আমাদের দেশবাসীকে আমাদের বিশ্ববাসীকে হেদায়ত করো আল্লাহ মাফ চাওয়ার তফিক দান করো আল্লাহ মাফ ফেরাত করো আল্লাহ হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ রহম করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কোন রহমকারী নাই হেদায়তকারী নাই মাগফেরাতকারী নাই আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া রক্ষাকারী কেউ নাই আল্লাহ আমাদের আমাদের ক্ষমতা নাই নফসের থেকে বাঁচার শয়তানের থেকে বাঁচার দুনিয়ার চাকচিক্যের থেকে বাঁচার আল্লাহ প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আমাদেরকে তুমি হেফাজত করে রেখো এক মুহূর্ত আমাদেরকে ছেড়ে দিও না এই তিন শক্তির কাছে আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ এবং হাত ধরে ক্যাম হাত ধরে কবর পর্যন্ত নিয়ে যেও আমাদেরকে আল্লাহ এবং শয়তানের শেষ চেষ্টা মৃত্যুর সময় ব্যর্থ করে দিও আল্লাহ যাতে করে কলেমা কলেমা পরে আমরা আমরা দুনিয়া থেকে যেতে পারি এবং কবরে তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার পেতে পারি এবং হাসরের ময়দানে তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার পেতে পারি এবং পুলসিরাত পার হতে তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার পেতে পারি আল্লাহ এবং পিনা হিসাবে জন্য তোর ফের দোষে দাখিল হতে পারি আল্লাহ তোমার 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 ইমান যে পর্যায়ে হওয়া উচিত হলে তোমার আমল সেভাবে করতে পারবো তোমার রেজামন্দি হাসিল করতে পারবো আল্লাহ তোমার ভালোবাসা হাসিল করতে পারবো সেরকম ইমান দান করো এবং সেরকম আমল দান করো আল্লাহ সেরকম এলাইম শিক্ষা করার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ সেরকম তোমাকে স্মরণ করার তৌফিক দান করো চব্বিশ ঘন্টায় উঠতে বসতে আল্লাহ সেরকম আমাদের আমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজন এবং অন্যান্য মানুষের প্রতি মাখলুকের প্রতি দায়ী দায়িত্ব পালন করার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ এবং মানুষের কাছে তোমার বাণী পৌঁছে দেওয়ার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ সবচেয়ে বড় গোনা যেটা আমরা করি আল্লাহ সেটা তোমার তোমার কথা আমরা নিজেদের কাছে ধরে রাখি আল্লাহ মানুষের কাছে পৌঁছে দিই দিই না আল্লাহ সেই প্রচেষ্টাটা আমরা করি না আল্লাহ যে জন্য তুমি আমাদেরকে শ্রেষ্ঠ উন্মত হিসাবে আখ্যায়িত করেছো এবং প্রত্যেকটা কাজ যাতে কেবল মাত্র কেবল মাত্র তোমার সন্তুষ্টির জন্য করতে পারি আল্লাহ সেই তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ আল্লাহ আমরা বিভিন্ন জন বিভিন্ন নেক হাজত নিয়ে হাত উঠিয়েছি তুমি তা জানো এবং তা পূরণ করার মালিক আল্লাহ কোনো কিছু যদি পৃথিবীর জন্য ক্ষতিকর হয় তার বদলা তুমি আখেরাতে দিও 
আমরা বিভিন্ন বিপদ আপদে হাত উঠিয়েছি তুমি আমাদের বিপদ আপদ দূর করার মালিক আল্লাহ আমরা বিভিন্ন বালা মুসিবতে এবং অসুখ বিসুখে হাত উঠিয়েছি বা আমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজনের অসুখের অসুখ বিসুখের জন্য হাত উঠিয়েছি তুমি আমাদের আমাদের অসুখ বিসুখ আমাদের বিপদ আপদ আমাদের বালা মুসিবত আমাদের নেক হাজত পুরা করে দিও আল্লাহ রবনা <laughs> تقبل مني انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اننا كنا من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وحب لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين ان شاء الله شامنا ربي باري الله تعالى توفيق دي لي আবার বসবো ان شاء الله একে অপরকে দাওয়াত দিই এবং একে অপরের জন্য দোয়া করি আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওয়া রাহমাতুল্লাহি ওয়া বারাকাতুহ